The skincare that I used to love as a makeup guru, but now hate as a skin fluencer. Today, we are going to take a little trip down memory lane and look at some of the past and very embarrassing videos where I shared some of my skincare favorites that little did I know were actually destroying my skin. And for those who don't know, I have actually been on YouTube for 10 years, or is it 11? Hmm, time has escaped me. <laughs> been on the internet for quite some time. And when I first started posting on YouTube, it wasn't because of skincare, it was because I was insecure about my acne. And I was a model, so I felt like I was living a double life, and I wanted to show people the makeup that I used to get through every day. I wanted to expose all of the things that I was covering up. Even in 2009, when I first went to aesthetic school, the goal there wasn't to understand or to love skin, but to understand makeup. I was a makeup artist. Not a good one, but I was a makeup artist. But I had this interest in cosmetics, not because I loved the art of it. I honestly don't feel like I can do art very well. I love dissecting things though. It wasn't just for the love of art, but it was really as a necessity to try to cover things up. When it comes to aesthetic school, we've grown a lot throughout the years. I used to use a lot of things that I would not touch today. And I used to use things just purely based off of the brand. For instance, if it was designer, I thought it would make me worth more to use it because I didn't feel worthy in my own skin. We're talking designer brands that knew nothing about skincare. So let's let's just dive in. Let's talk about those. And we'll start with something a little bit calmer. Lush Cosmetics. I was freaking obsessed with Lush Cosmetics back when I was a beauty guru. Lush Cosmetics really was the sh back in the 2010s, 2015s. Their bath bombs and shower products were fun and exciting. This was like the era where Instagram was first taking off. It was like 2012 to 2015. And even 15, 16, everyone was posting their Lush bath bombs and their face masks and things. And I always loved that Lush, you know, seemed to be handmade and cruelty free. And they had all of this, you know, no nasties or all natural marketing, which back then I actually used to buy into, I used to believe in. And I still really respect Lush's dedication to the animals, to the planet, to their recycling programs. I still think they're an amazing brand and I still think they have some amazing bath bombs, but oh, their skincare was not for me. I used so many of their products. I vividly remember the mask of Magnimity or Magnimity. Magnimity is like generosity, but this was like a mint mask and I would use it on my face and my chest and my back. And I was like, this is gonna get rid of my back acne. Is it a fine mask? Sure, but does it really have acne fighting properties that are amazing? No. Get yourself some panoxyl wash, use that in your armpits on your back area. That is going to do way more and it's gonna cost less. I think the Magnaminty or Magnemity, that was like, what, $20? Whereas Panoxy you can get for six to eight. But I used to be obsessed with that and I would use it like once a week. I would face mask like multiple times a week because I was trying to just get rid of this acne and calm it down. And even if you look back into like makeup tutorials and stuff, you can see, you know, how desperately I was trying to just cover my skin and use these natural products because I thought they were better. There was also the um, Cosmic Warrior, Cosmetic Warrior. Basically Lush had launched these fresh face masks that you had to keep in the fridge. That was probably the beginning of like the first skincare fridge product out there but it was like these fresh handmade masks that you kept in the fridge they only lasted two to three weeks and you put them on your face and now that we know better we realize this is why we love preservatives so you don't have to buy a new product every two weeks but I would buy the new product every two weeks and I would use this and it had like what was it either blueberries or tea tree or something but it was supposed to help with acne well maybe for those who have the occasional breakout but for me no no it did not that cosmetic warrior was a nice try but it just did not work out but I had used that and I had probably purchased at least 30 of those. I would use the chocolate cupcake one. I feel like they had a couple of others that I dabbled into, but it was really the chocolate one and the cosmetic warrior. But now as a skin influencer who understands these things and really cares about the science of skincare and the cosmetic chemistry, not just of, oh, it looks fun. She's grown a bit. She has some, some differences. And a lot of Lush's products are really full of fragrance. I remember I purchased their gorgeous moisturizer because it was like $80 and I was like, it's the most expensive product they have in the store or it must work the best. I feel like I tried to use that so much and it just broke me out more than anything else. That was really disappointing. And I think I only ever purchased one or two of them because it was like $80 for a moisturizer, which is not bad in the grand scheme of things. But back then for, you know, 18 year old me, that's a lot of money. That's still a lot of money, especially for something that's filled with orange oil. I have a feeling that was the beginning of like my citrus irritation journey. If you didn't know, citrus essential oils and I don't always get along. But when it comes to their bath bombs, their bath bombs are filled with fragrance. And I don't hate fragrance. I really understand 
understand why sensorially it's so important to love our skin and care for ourselves. Working with doctors and derms, I understand there are people who have fragrance allergies and sensitivities, and I've worked with some of those people. And obviously, they should not be using Lush. But if you do want something fun, if you want something for you, if you want a Lady Gaga explosion in your bathtub, then Lush is still the way to go. And I will say, I am not the kind of person who sits down and takes baths anymore. I just don't have time. <laughs> um, like what, you sit in a bath and you just make yourself a bowl of human soup. I am much more of a shower person, you know, scrub, scrub, get it done. But maybe I should be more of a bath person. You see, I heard about that girl that brought her phone in the bath and like electrocuted herself. So I'm like, what am I gonna do while I sit in the bath forever? Like my ADHD will not allow me to sit for that long of a period of time, but maybe I should sit there and meditate. That's what I should do. I should have a lush bath bomb and just meditate and put my phone away. I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am rich, I am that bitch. I am gonna go get that bag and I am not gonna take your shit. If only those affirmations were true, but uh, maybe we can make them. Yes, Lush happened, Lush was a thing, and if you still wanna have a fun time and don't mind cleaning up glitter for about an hour, then it's still not a bad choice. Something else that I used to use, which was not recommended, is this stupid Givenchy face mask. This was one of the dumbest purchases I've ever made. As you know, fashion designers are not dermatologists, nor are they chemists, nor are they skincare experts. But as we see, you know, with makeup, all of these designer brands like to slap their name onto products and just sell them. And in the case of Dior, we get really shitty eyeshadows that are barely pigmented. But in the case of things like YSL, we might actually get a good formula. Well, Givenchy not only dove into cosmetics and eyes and lips, which I don't really care, I don't mind, but they also dove into skincare. And my dumbass went out and bought this, it was like a set of multiple masks and it was called the Black for Light mask. In the world of now, we recognize that, okay, was that title, like, was that label problematic? What does it mean, the black for light mask? It was basically this black face mask. I think it had antioxidants in it. It came with a brush and it came with like, what, eight or 16 little pods that you had to buy inside of this little box. It was basically just this black face mask that cost a ridiculous amount of money. I think it cost like 80 or like 150 bucks for them. And they were like little Keurig pods, but you couldn't recycle them. So they were super unequal friendly and they didn't even do shit to my face. And I remember sharing them. I think it was a favorites video. And I was like, I really love these. I feel like they're helping my acne placebo effect in full force, my bitch. Those did nothing to help my acne. If anything, I feel like they made them worse and they were so expensive that I couldn't keep up using them. I would buy these designer skincare or makeup products because I was like, oh my gosh, the designer, it makes me important, it makes me valuable. So I had a major issue with debt, with shopping, all of the issues. And um, yeah, I purchased the Givenchy, Givenchy, I don't even know how to call it. I purchased the Givenchy stuff to try to make myself feel better. And if anything, it didn't do anything or it just aggravated my skin more. And again, when we have traditional designers who are amazing and artistic and understand fashion, why do they think they know skincare? I get it. If you have a Chanel powder or lipstick, you want to like show off that you're rich, go for it. Be that bitch. But when it comes to skincare, nobody knows the brand of moisturizer you're wearing. Nobody knows what face mask you put on and washed off. Why are you going to spend like a hundred something dollars lining some corporation's pocket for a face mask that does nothing? Speaking of, I also did that with Chanel. Oh yes, this went deep. I remember specifically, I went to LA for like the first or second time and I went to Rodeo Drive and I had all my acne and I had spent almost two hours in the morning at the hotel trying to cover it up. And I was like trying to wear all of the expensive things that I had. I was in major amounts of credit card debt, but I was like walking down the street and I was like trying to take photos of myself and be like, do I fit in here? Do I look right? And like, no, I looked like a fish out of water. I looked like a cabbage growing in the middle of a beach. I looked like a porcupine at a preschool. I was so out of place, but was I there? I was. Did I try? Absolutely. Did I post it on Instagram? Of course I did. And you know what else I did? I walked into the Chanel store and I remember looking around at everything and it was way too expensive. And I was like trying to check my credit card to see how much credit I had left. And it was like nothing, you know, cause I hadn't even had breakfast. I was with my father and thank goodness he was, you know, helping me out financially. But I was sitting there trying to look around Chanel and I was like, I must buy something. I must leave with the little Chanel bag from Rodeo Drive because my worth as a human depends on this. And I remember looking around, I looked at their makeup stuff and I landed on this dumbass skincare product. I was basically talking to the guy. He was very, he knew how to sell me things, okay? He spoke to my heart. 
And he was looking at me, and even through the makeup, he could see that I have acne. And he was like, oh, have you tried Chanel's skincare products? They are luxurious, they are the best you'll ever find. And he ended up showing me this sunscreen. Thank God it was even a sunscreen. It was like a tinted Chanel moisturizer, as well as a glycolic acid peel. And I was like, this, this is going to solve all of my problems. This is what the celebrities use. It's going to be amazing for me. And I didn't have enough money, uh, like credit left on my credit card to buy both of them. So what did I do? I think I bought the glycolic one and I put it in that little Chanel bag and I walked out my store feeling like I was actually worth something that day, which is so dumb because you know, the feeling went away the second I looked at my credit card and realized I couldn't afford the Uber back to the hotel. Oh, but did I cherish that Chanel glycolic acid moisture mask thing and that stupid SPF CC cream with my life? I was a makeup guru. I was putting blush on on the internet and sharing it with the people. And damn, I had Chanel. And was I proud of this Chanel? I was like, this is my Chanel skincare. It's amazing for my skin. I wear sunscreen. This is a really light coverage, you know, makeup. It just oxidizes a little. No, bitch, it's not even your shade. And you know what Chanel has? A whole bunch of fragrance a whole bunch of ingredients that really don't do much. A big old price tag because you're paying for the brand name. And it was like packaged in this plastic that just looked like a Nokia phone. Like it looked like one of those brick cell phones from the late 90s. It was horrible and it wasn't great for my skin. And I'll give it to them. At least it had glycolic acid. Like that was one thing about that product that was like at least decent or at least the moisturizer had a sunscreen. Like that's more than Givenchy could say. But I wasted so much money on those things trying to prove myself, trying to show that I had money or value to compensate for the way I looked. But a lot of my skincare purchases back then were literally just based off of the same reasons my fashion purchases were. I was trying to impress people who didn't like me already, trying to make them give a shit about me when I didn't feel good enough about myself. And if that ain't the truth, whoa, I don't know what is. But you know what's also really interesting? I also used to really love the drugstore brands. Yes, we're talking like Neutrogena and Yes2. I still love some Yes2 products. People are shocked about that, but like I still love some Yes2 products, but Neutrogena, oh, I have a long history with Neutrogena. I used to love their lip glosses. I used to love their oil-free moisturizer. I used to love their acne scrub, which I no longer recommend because it really damages skin and it just dried me out even more. And their Neutrogena Wave, remember the sand blaster for your face? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I was knee deep in that and it was knee deep in my dermis. I mean, that thing was just like a power tool to destroy your skin. Neutrogena was something that I obsessed over and doctors and dermatologists recommended it to me. There are still times in clinic where doctors and derms recommend Neutrogena. There are also some stories about Neutrogena reps that come into those derm offices. And if you haven't seen our video on Neutrogena, I kind of expose what happens behind the scenes. But because Neutrogena is not cruelty free, which really matters to me, I've chosen to align my morals and values with my purchases. And so I no longer purchase products that aren't cruelty free. And because of that, I no longer use Neutrogena. I don't think they're revolutionary. I feel like a lot of new skincare lines have come out that have really advanced and really taken cutting edge data and science and looked at active ingredients and done stuff with them. And while Neutrogena could still be a good starter, you know, for someone who's just diving into skincare or who is confused, they're also selling their hand cream as a body lotion, but charging you three times the price. Like Neutrogena does not impress me much in the words of Shania Twain. Nah, uh, uh, so you got the scrub, but is your skin still rough? Because with Neutrogena, it absolutely was. <laughs> Neutrogena is something I no longer support nor endorse. Yet, as a makeup guru who struggled with acne, it was like my favorite thing. And speaking of those scrubbers, oh my God, I used so many scrubby brushes, specifically the Clarisonic. <laughs> The Clarisonic. It's literally a toothbrush for your face, a glorified toothbrush for your face. It oscillated and it cost like 350 bucks. And you know what? I didn't just buy one. I bought like three of them. And then they sold the sensitive brush head. So I was like, I need the sensitive brush head. And then they sold the makeup brush head. So I was like, I need the makeup brush head. No, bitch. you needed to get your consumerism under control and stop trying to spend your way to self-esteem because it wasn't working. And you know, I didn't even love using the Clarisonic. Like it would actually irritate my skin. You all know that story of when I over exfoliated my skin basically came off. Yeah, the Clarisonic was a favorite and I feel like a lot of people used it, especially in the makeup world. We would all try to use it underneath our foundation to like make our foundation like look better when really we were just allowing our foundation to soak deeper into our skin and irritate our pores. It was, <laughs> it was a disaster. And I mean, just the cake face, the makeup wipes. Oh my God, I was obsessed with makeup wipes. Again, Neutrogena. The Neutrogena makeup wipes were my jam and I will admit they are probably one of the most effective makeup wipes out there. But are their ingredients any good? No. Are they irritating to the skin? 
Absolutely. Are they biodegradable? No. Are they chock full of fragrance? Like you don't even remove the makeup. You're just wiping residue around your face. <laughs> Why? In the words of Caroline Hirons, makeup wipes are for festivals, fannies, and emergencies. Not for regular use. But oh, did I use them regularly because I thought they were good for me. And I even have that Target haul where I pulled out like a stupid St. Ives apricot scrub. The things that I used because I didn't know better, abhorrent and embarrassing. But as a makeup guru, I felt like my consumer choices were very different than as someone whose focus and passion was skincare. You know, because even when I started on YouTube, I didn't realize how beautiful our biology was, or I hadn't delved into sports medicine or emergency medicine or understanding how our bodies work together, understanding dermatology and clinical practice of looking at different skin conditions. And I was actually really queasy. I could not handle needles. I could not handle blood could not handle cysts. And oh my God, now sutures and little stabs are like my favorite thing. Come to mama. But you know what? I think it's a testament to how we've grown throughout the years, how we learn new things, how we as resilient humans can change and adapt. And I think that is beautiful. And it honestly makes me wonder, what is it that we're all doing or using or obsessed with right now that is going to be the Clairsonic or like the Lush Cosmetics in the next five years. What do you think that is? What do you think it is now that we're gonna just look back at and be like, oh, I can't believe we did that to ourselves. Maybe like not using sunscreen, over exfoliation. I don't think it's gonna be retinoids because there's so much data to back them up. Pseudoscience, clean beauty. You tell me, leave it in the comments box. I do want to know. And while you're down there, make sure that you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you, let's leave the past in the past and learn from it as we move forward. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <sighs> Love you guys. Bye.